Hello everybody, Gavin McCormack here. We are in South Georgia, just off the Scotia Sea, and this week we're talking all about elephant seals. And as you can see behind us, we have a colony of male elephant seals basking on the beach. And this week we're very, very lucky indeed to be with Hannah. Hello, Hannah. Hi, Gavin. Hannah is an environmental scientist and a naturalist, and she literally loves this job. Now, Hannah, these amazing creatures, I understand they migrate very far distances. Can you tell us about how they actually travel around the Antarctic region? Yeah, sure. So our elephant seals are found all around sub-Antarctic islands, um, all, yeah, through the Southern Ocean. So they're found here at South Georgia, around South Sandwich Islands, even also found around Macquarie Island, which is south of Australia. Now, they are amazing divers, only challenged by the sperm whale I hear. How far can they dive? And why do they go so deep? So they can dive over 2,000 meters deep. Goodness me. Yeah, absolutely impressive. They've got one of the, yeah, the records for seals and sea lions. They hold the record. They are the deepest uh, diver. And they're diving that deep for their food. Okay, what kind of things do they eat? They predominantly feed on squid and large fish. Now, elephant seals are absolutely massive. I, I imagine they have no predators. Are there any predators that they have in the ocean? They definitely have predators when they're younger. So the primary predator would be uh, animals such as orcas or potentially sharks, but orcas would be the, the main one. Uh, their huge size is one of their biggest defenses. So they are born relatively large, about just over a meter in length, but then they get so big, as you can see with these ones behind. <laughs> now, these animals are absolutely huge. I'm two meters long. How big can they get? They can get nearly double your size. Two meters long, that's four meters long. What about how much can they weigh? They can weigh over 3,500 kilograms. That is absolutely gigantic. It is, as you can see by these big fellas behind us. That's right, now these are the males. Now, how does it work with males and females when it comes to breeding? Do the males come onto the land first or the females, how does it work? That's a great question. So the males will come to land first in about late August, early September, and the females will come to shore a few weeks after. And what the males are doing is they're establishing their territory on the beach. They'll be fighting with each other, establishing the area that they are going to have as their part of the beach. And then they are what is referred to as a beach master. The females will then come ashore and the males are determined to mate with all of the females in his area. That can be up to a hundred females. Goodness but me. On average, it's about 30. That's wild, yes. And they make some fantastic noises. They do. Now, I understand these males here are molting. Uh, and elephant seals are one of the only mammals that actually molts. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so they're molting. What happens is elephant seals go through what's known as catastrophic molt. So all their fur sort of comes off all around them at the same time. So they come to shore, they hang out in wallows like this, and they um, the fur will be coming off in these chunks or over the period of about 40 days, so just over a month. And they don't go out to sea during this time. They just let the fur come off and it's replaced by the new stuff. And you can actually see behind us a lot of the um, elephant seals, they're flicking sand up onto their backs. And that's um, a way to sort of help the irritation a little bit. Maybe they rub on each other, use a bit of sand, but it also acts as a bit of a sunscreen and protects them from the sun. Oh my goodness yeah. me, they really use soil as sunscreen. Exactly. That's remarkable. It's pretty now, cool. Now on land, they look very cumbersome. They don't walk very well. They're kind of wobbling around. Yeah. What are they like in the ocean? Are they the same? In the ocean, they are much more streamlined and they're very well adapted. They spend so much of their time in the sea and they move their body. The way that their, um, their body is, uh, operates is that they use the back of their body to go side to side, so hind propulsion. So the body goes like this towards those back flippers and they use that to dive down deep. Okay, now when they dive down deep, I mean, if you're going two kilometers down, you must be able to hold your breath for a very long time. I mean, the average human can hold their breath for about a minute, yeah. up to two minutes if they try really hard. How long can these guys hold their breath for? They can hold their breath for about two hours. Two hours? Yeah. Goodness me. Now, is it true that some elephant seals will actually swallow stones? And why would they do that? It is true that they might swallow stones. And the reason they do that is it acts as a bit of a weight belt. So these stones are what are known as gastrolites. 
and they'll swallow the stones and they stay in the stomach and it might help them stay deeper. It might help them process a bit of that food. So, you know, they're eating squid, like it can help grind up the squid beak, that kind of thing. Um, but also, in uh, some species of seals, because others also swallow stones, it's actually been known to stop them feeling so hungry while they spend so much time on shore molting. Ah, that's so amazing. So they swallow stones for two really important reasons, really, to help them sink to the bottom of the oceans to catch their prey, but number two, to help them feel full while they spend all this time on the land. That's absolutely yeah. amazing. Now this week, we want you to actually learn from the elephant seal. The elephant seal migrates around about 33,000 kilometers every single year. That's a very long way. Now they might return to the same spot to molt and the same spot to breed, but they will visit lots of other places along the way. And when they do, well, they're welcomed by nature. Now around the world, we have refugees fleeing lots of wars, floods, famines, and they need to leave their country and arrive in new countries. And when they do, sometimes, unfortunately, they are not welcome, and that's a real shame. This week, we want you to have an investigation with your friends, with your community, and with your peers to find out which people are leaving countries around the world and arriving in your country, and what are you going to do when they arrive to make them feel absolutely welcome, just like the elephant seals here. Now, Hannah, there's lots of girls around the world, children, boys, girls, all over the planet thinking, Goodness me, Hannah's got a life. She's a scientist, she's living in nature, she's with all of these amazing penguins and elephant seals. What got you into this job and how can children around the world be like you? Well, I'd say the one thing is, one of the main things is follow your passion. If this is the sort of thing that gets you excited and you just want to keep learning and keep discovering, then follow that and see where it leads you. When I was growing up, I could never have dreamed that I'd be here with you now, Gavin, doing this right now, but it's amazing. And I just put it down to the fact that I followed what I loved and my passions and interests. Now, when you were really young, did you discover that you liked nature and how did you discover that? I did discover that I liked nature when I was really young and I think it was from just spending a lot of time outside. I have my parents to thank for taking us camping and sometimes they would even, if we'd finish school and they'd give us a little bit of food and lock the door and tell us we had to play outside for two hours. <laughs> and I think that that really helped me fall in love with the little things, the things in your backyard, the birds in the trees, just climbing around and just exploring and then that really showed me Wow, I really love nature and it, there's so many questions. I think the more time you spend outside, the more time you spend in nature, the more questions you have about it. So it really fueled my investigation brain and then I just wanted to try and find the answers to those questions. Amazing, and now we're finding all the answers, sharing with everybody at home. Exactly. Now I think what's really important from Hannah's message is that although there are many temptations to stay indoors, to stay on your iPad, to watch the TV, to watch another TV show on Netflix, the most important things in the world are outside in the garden or in nature where all the questions are waiting to be answered. Hannah, you've been amazing. Thanks, Gavin. And we'll see you all next week. Thank you.